every <clears throat> whoa <coughs> hello everybody what is up today i'm going to be doing a book haul i think it might be my first book haul of 2018 i'm pretty sure it is it's also like 100 degrees in my house right now so pray for me the reason why this is my first book haul of the year is because for the past i think two years now i've actually been on like a very strict book buying ban i guess sort of not really a ban but i've been just really sticking to buying the books that I know I'm gonna read right away, the books that I really, really, really want. For that reason, I didn't think I had that many books to haul. It seems I was wrong. I haven't been buying books, but I have still been receiving a lot of books in book subscription boxes, and I've been receiving a lot of ARCs lately uh, because I've been asking a lot more for ARCs that I'm really interested in. I have a total of, I think, 30 books, and I'm gonna try and show you them all pretty quickly so that I do not melt. I'm also going to split this up into sections so that you can watch whatever section you wanna watch. So I'm just gonna split it up between books that I bought, ARCs, and subscription box books. So I will leave the timestamps in the description box so that you can skip ahead if you don't want to see a certain section. Let's go. Okay, so the first books that I bought were the fourth and fifth book in the Falling Kingdom series. I forgot what this was called for a second. I didn't really want to give synopsises on synopsis synopsis. I didn't really want to give uh, summaries on the sequels of books, but uh, Fallen Kingdoms, if you don't know what that is, which I'm sure you do, it is like a Game of Thrones kind of, but for YA. And it's got elemental magic and it's really entertaining. Lots and lots of characters, lots of POV, uh, lots of bad guys. After that, I picked up another couple of books from a series, and that is A Still Life from Louise Penny. This is the first book in the Inspector Ganache series. And I picked up Dead Cold, which I don't have right now in my hands because Colton is reading it and he's got it with him. Uh, but Dead Cold is the second book. And then there is The Cruelest Month, which is the third book. But the series is about um, an inspector, Inspector Ganache, who goes to solve a crime in this little town and this little town is actually inspired by the town i live in after that i bought a court of frost and starlight by sarah J. Mass. this is the novella that comes after um the third book akawar and it's very tiny super small not much happens in this book this is pretty much uh what happens after the events of akawar um, it just kind of fills in the blank. Really nothing much happens in here. If you did pick it up, you're not missing anything. After that, uh, for my birthday, I decided to buy myself a couple of books. I bought The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. It's about fairies and everybody's been loving this and I am so late on the train, but it's fine. Uh, I just actually started reading this and I am, I'm about 100 pages in, so I'm not very far. This is about three sisters who were taken away from their home and brought into the land of fairy by a man who killed their parents. They have to grow up in fairy, being mortals, and uh, they're not liked very much because of that. And the other book that I picked up for my birthday is Illuminae uh, by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I love Never Night by Jay Kristoff and I like sci-fi a lot. So I figured that I should probably pick up Illuminae by now um, since the series is done and everybody loves this series so I should probably pick it up and give it a go. And to be honest, I really don't know anything about this book. Um, I know it's about a space war and I know it's written in like documents and emails and things like that but besides that, I really don't know anything. The last one that I got is The Poppy War by R.F. Quang and I got this as a birthday present from Allie over Hardback Quarter. I uh, was gonna pick it up and she told me not to pick it up and she bought it for me for my birthday because she's nice. Everybody's been raving about this lately and they say it is like really really tough. I'm assuming they mean that it's very violent and graphic and stuff which is 
cool with me. I'm fine with that. This is about Rin, who is this poor peasant girl, and she gets into this elite military school. So this is really about a war story um, in Asian culture. Everybody that I take recommendations from is loving this book, so I'm assuming I'm gonna also like it. We're gonna move on to ARCs now, and I'm going to do these in the release date order. The first one that I got was The Savior's Champion by Jenna Morrissey. This came out in May? April? I don't remember. This is a signed arc I received from the author and Jenna is so cool and so nice. If you guys don't know who she is, she actually has a YouTube channel also and this book was amazing. I have a review up on my channel already which I will leave in the link down below so that you guys can check it out. Um, the Savior's Champion is about a boy named Tobias who enters into this championship where there's a bunch of guys fighting to win uh, the savior or the pretty much like the queen of the land. Anyway, they're fighting to win her hand. It's like The Bachelor but like super bloody and it is awesome. After that I received Furyborn by Claire Legrand and I got this from Raincoast Books in exchange for honest review. I also love this book and I have a review up on my channel. I've been being A plus with reviews lately. People called this a feminist fantasy and it is about a bunch of kick-ass women. Um, it follows the two main characters, Eliana and Riel, and they live 2,000 years apart in time. Each chapter switches between their point of views, but it's still 2,000 years apart. So it's quite interesting. One of the main characters, Eliana, is uh, bisexual and these women are prophesied to be either the Sun Queen or the Blood Queen. Um, one will be like their salvation and the other the Blood Queen. I mean I think you can figure out that the Blood Queen is probably not a good thing. Next up is Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. This is an arc I received from HarperCollins Canada in exchange for review and I recently posted my review for this one as well. This is a retelling slash origin story of the Little Mermaid and it follows um, the story before Ursula became like the villain. Next up is I Am Still Alive by Kate Marshall which is an arc I received from Penguin and this is a survival story about Jess Cooper who is a disabled character. Um, she was in a car accident that killed her mother and left her with little use of her leg and then she gets forced to move in with her father who is like this Alaskan mountain man type of guy and um, turns out he actually lives in Canada in the middle of nowhere and he's involved with some not so nice guys and she ends up having to survive in the woods alone uh, with no shelter and no food or anything um, just a dog for company. Then we have These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rash and this comes out in August. This is an arc I received from HarperCollins as well. This is a very politically heavy YA book uh, that follows three main characters. It follows Adaluna or Lou who is a child of to uh, politicians and she was also a soldier in the war, a child soldier. And then it follows Devro, who is a pirate um, or a steam raider. And it also follows Bennett or Ben, who is a prince and he's also gay. This is about an island called Grace Larray that was being oppressed by Argrid, who is like a very religious country. Grace Larray is known for its magical plants, uh, so they have different plants that do different things like super speed or strength, things like that. And Argrid sees this uh, magic that they have as evil. They burn people at the stake for using magic or even talking about magic, anything like that. Escaping from Houdini by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, and this is the third book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. And this is an arc I received from Hatchet. Uh, in exchange for a review. This comes out in September. I absolutely love the first two books in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. It is so on point with what I like. Um, it's very like Sherlock Holmes. It's very descriptive if you're not into like forensics and blood and gore. You probably won't like this one because it's very very descriptive uh, and also very scientific. It follows Audrey Rose who is a woman living in this is like a Victorian era 
and she wants to be a scientist slash she does autopsies and stuff um and her companion thomas cresswell does as well and it's kind of frowned upon for women to do this kind of work back then um but like she's a kick-ass female character and I really love this series and I cannot wait to pick this one up. Next up are two books that I got in a swag bag from Raincoast Books. So I have an arc of Sadie by Courtney Summers, which is a, what I'm discovering is a super anticipated book for this fall. This is about a girl named Sadie who disappears while trying to find the man who might have murdered her sister. I believe. And then they also sent me The Darkest Star by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This is a tie-in to the World of the Lux series and this is about years after the Luxon have come um, to Earth and it's like well known and everybody knows that there's aliens and this follows a girl who I'm assuming falls for a Luxon. Yep because it's a YA. Next up is The Deepest Roots by Miranda Acevedo and this is another arc I received from HarperCollins Canada. This is about um, three girls that grow up in a place in Kansas where for the past century every girl is born with a, um, a special talent or a power and this is really a story about friendship. This is said to be like Morgan Matson meets Maggie Steve Otter and that sounds really intriguing to me so I feel like it's kind of like a magic story but not too much just a little bit of mystical and the last arc I have to talk about is probably one that I was the most excited about and that is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera which is another arc I received from HarperCollins Canada in exchange for a review and I am so excited to pick this up and this is about two guys in New York City that can't quite make it work. I actually received this with a cute little package, um, kind of like a breakup box and it had, I still have the stuff sitting here actually, it has chocolates, a face mask, and tissues. So this is about Arthur and Ben who are in New York City and Ben is just getting over a breakup and Arthur is in New York City for the summer. Arthur and Ben meet at a post office um, while Ben is dropping off a box of his ex-boyfriend's things and this is you know what if they're the exception what if they're the ones that like it's love at first sight kind of thing. On to the books that I received in subscription boxes. So the first three were in um, the I don't remember if it was December or January, Unicorn Crate and it, Queen of Hearts series by uh, Colleen Oakes and it came with all three books in the series and this is a Alice in Wonderland retelling. I think this is an origin story actually of the Queen of Hearts which is so cool. I love origin stories. Um, the first one Queen of Hearts, the second one Blood of Wonderland and the third one is War of the Cards. And then I got a Reign of the Fallen in a Page Habit box. Um, a Reign of the Fallen is a really cool concept for a book. It's about necromancers and um, they bring back the dead. And if they don't raise the dead quick enough, um, they turn into like these zombie things. And it's like a really cool concept. The next one is The Apocalypse of Elena Mendoza. I know the main character is, I don't know, I haven't read the book, uh, but I know she has a crush on a girl who she ends up performing a miracle and saving her after she was shot um, and she just like heals the gunshot wound. I know this is another one of these weird kind of mystical, magical, kind of seems like real story but isn't. The next one is also Page Habit. I think all of these are, yeah. The rest are all Page Habit books. Um, this one is The Truth Beneath the Lies. It seems like it's about two like troubled teenage girls who uh, eventually get thrown together in some way and only one girl will live. That's what it says. Next up is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This is about uh, America with zombies. I don't know a whole lot about this one, but I do know it's like zombies rise 
in America and certain children are chosen to fight or go to like fight schools. I will read the back that's um, got some blurbs. It says, this novel is everything. A tightly plotted thriller, an undead actioner, a stinging historical critique, and the heartbreaking story of one indomitable young woman's fight for survival in a post-Civil War America where a country's twin sins, racism and colonialism, refuse to die. Dread Nation does for Reconstruction what Hamilton did for the Revolution. Next up we have The Poet X, another gorgeous cover. I know this is about slam poetry uh, and a girl who does slam poetry, but besides knowing that it's about slam poetry, I don't know anything else. We're almost at the end, okay? I've got this book and two more to talk about, okay? You're doing great. Next up is The Undead Girl Gang, which I received in a page habit box again. Um, I just finished reading this book, actually, and it was so fun. This is about a girl named Mila, who is a witch, and her only friend um, is said to have committed suicide after two other popular girls at school had committed suicide. But she does not believe that her best friend did that. She believes that somebody murdered her. So she comes up with a spell to bring her friend back from the dead temporarily to try and solve her murder. And she ends up bringing back the two other girls as well. So uh, basically there's three zombies walking around their town while they try and find out the real story of who killed these girls. The last page habit uh, book that I got is The Bird and the Blade by Megan Bannon. I don't know a whole lot about this, although I do know it is inspired by um, the Mongol Empire. And I know that it has been said if you like The Wrath and the Dawn, you would enjoy this also. Last book is A Court of Frost and Starlight again, um, and that is because I received a um, box called the... Starlight, Illumicrate, Starfall, Starfall, the Starfall box from Illumicrate, which was a um, Akatar themed box, and it was amazing, and it came with another copy of uh, this book, so I just thought I'd mention it anyway. Are we going to bet and see if I can pick up all of these books? It's not going to happen, but we're going to try it, okay? I don't know. Okay. This is not going well. it for this haul video. I hope you guys enjoyed my pain. Please be sure to check out any of the reviews I linked down below if you guys are interested and I hope to see you guys in my next one.